Hello everyone, we are back. This is Dr. Gerek, Chapter 9, Part 3. Today we are going to start talking about types of labor market discrimination. First, we are going to talk about employer discrimination. Let's get started. So, let's talk about different types of discrimination by the source of discrimination. Number one is employer discrimination, which will study employee discrimination. Workers uh, want to work with certain people. Uh, groups of people customer discrimination customer is the source of discrimination and statistical discrimination this is basically past experiences and past observations with different groups of people causing the discrimi discrimination let's get started so first we'll talk about employer discrimination we are going to learn about becker's model okay if uh, according to this model, if black and white workers are perfect substitutes, employers have will have a segregated workforce. So we are working off of black and white work groups. However, this could employ to men, women. It could employ to Hispanic, non-Hispanic groups, Asian, non-Asian, uh, so and so forth. Okay, it can also uh, differ based on different countries, uh, based on different groups. So. As a result of this model, we'll see even non-discriminating employers will have a segregated workforce as they may employ all black workers, okay? At the end, we'll learn that discrimination does not pay and employers will hire wrong type of worker, uh, workers and they will hire the wrong number of workers if they're discriminatory. So at the end of the day, discrimination does not pay. Even if we're not thinking about um, the right reasons, we are just focusing on uh, profits, it's still wrong. Okay, so let's get started. This is employer discrimination. It's also called taste discrimination. So firm owner is against, for instance, hiring, according to this model, hiring women, minorities, all or people with differing sexual orientation or even ugly people you know it's it's kind of shocking discriminated people uh, against their the way they look so let's study discrimination in the black and white worker context okay so we're going to assume black and white workers are equally productive so they are perfect substitutes Marginal product of a black worker is exactly equal to marginal product of a white worker and MP is the marginal product. WW is the competitive wage paid to white workers. WB is the competitive market wage paid to black workers. Assume that market determines the wages such that black wage rate is less than white wage rate. And this is a fact, right, from our statistical results. What would a profit maximizing, let's say, colorblind firm do? Colorblindness means that the firm doesn't care about the employers, uh, the way they look. They are just trying to maximize profits. They will be hiring black workers only. But what's wrong with this? They, this still means segregation. Okay, You don't have a mix of workers. Okay, so let's take a look at this case according to this Becker's model. Also, please keep in mind that Becker's model is a really old model, okay? It goes way back, 70s, even older, okay? So what would a profit maximizing colorblind firm do according to this model? Use the marginal product per dollar spent condition. Remember, capital and labor have a substitute. So... Marginal product of white workers divided by marginal product of black workers is equal to 1. However, white wages are higher than black wages. So you're going to hire all black workers because it makes sense. So wage of white workers divided by black workers is greater than 1, right? If you divide this by WB. So that white black worker wage ratio, wage ratio will be greater than one so i know that marginal product of black uh, white and black workers is one so you get this one because this this thing is greater than one and i know 
marginal product of white to black worker ratio is one. So you just, whenever you see one, just put this in. So white wage ratio to black wage ratio is greater than marginal product of white to black workers. Just change the places of these two terms. Okay, so, or these two terms. What I did was I changed the place of those two terms. I want to show it, right? So it doesn't matter like this. These two, exchange these, move WW to denominator to the right-hand side, move marginal product of black workers to the numerator of the left-hand side. Okay, what you see here is that for $1 spent, on hiring a black worker, actually you get more output compared to $1 spent hiring a white worker. So, I am going to hire all black workers. Okay, this is like a colorblind uh, is a weird term. I find it strange. Um, however, if this is a colorblind firm, only cares about profits, right? Hire black workers only. Okay. So this is still segregated workforce. You're separating different groups of workers in different group, uh, different jobs. So this is the, for instance, the number of black workers employed. This is the number of white workers employed. So this is the isoquant. I'm just going to show this thing graphically. Okay. Isoquant slope is... Negative of marginal product of white workers divided by marginal product of black workers, which is negative one. Here's your slope, right? This is normally isoquants look like this, remember, producing certain things. However, for perfect substitutes, these, these two workers are perfect substitutes. Isoquant is going to be a straight line, okay? So isocost is the wage ratio, white wages divided by the wage rate of black workers. Again, how do we find it? It's the slope of your ISO cost. How do we do this? This is done by number of black workers times wage of black workers plus number of white workers wage rate of white workers equals to some cost, okay? And this is on the y-axis, right? I'm going to pull it to one side. So EB, Y on the y-axis, as you can see, equals, right? C, you're going to get minus... W, W, E, W, divide everything by this. So, total cost divided by W, B minus W, W. So, I'm W, B. So, I'm just showing you this is the slope, right? Negative W, W, divided by W, B. And this, this is going to be. the intercept for the y-intercept. But it's okay for now. We are just going to continue. So negative WW over WB, if you get rid of the negative sign, right, to see the magnitude, I know this is greater than 1. So if the slope here in absolute value is equal to 1, if WW over WB is greater than 1, so it's going to be steeper. So how do we find that optimal level? Check this out. It's going to be a corner solution. Remember with the ISO quant, ISO cost, labor capital, right? We had labor capital quantity. Boom. You had the ISO cost. We found an internal solution. That means positive numbers of labor and capital hired. So what I'm trying to do here is, for instance, I want to produce this level of output right isoquant i'm trying to go to the lowest iso cost this is too high so i'm going to go to this iso cost therefore i have a corner solution here okay so 
So here I'm hiring only black workers, no white workers. Okay. This was a colorblind firm. Even colorblind firm causes workplace segregation. Discriminatory firm is little difference. Different. Discriminatory firm is little different. Wage rate of black and white workers. These are competitive wages paid to white and black workers. However, because this company is discriminatory, this is the perceived cost of hiring a black worker. So not only the wage paid, but also it causes certain discomfort. One plus D. So D is a positive number, which we call a discrimination coefficient. Even though, for instance, women, cost of hiring women is certain dollars. You don't want to work with women. So it feels as if you're paying more. That's the discrimination coefficient. This D measures the racial prejudice that makes employers to blindly perceive the cost of hiring black workers as being higher than the true cost. Okay? So MP... Per dollar spent condition, right? Like this. So marginal product of white and black workers is equal to 1. Now the wage ratio is white wage rate divided by black wage, wage rate plus 1 plus D. So is it greater than 1 or less than 1? What's going on? If... The white-black wage ratio adjusted by the discrimination coefficient is greater than 1, okay? Then this is the, you can plug in MPW over MPB here. If you rearrange it, MPB over WB 1 plus D uh, greater than, so dollars spent on, $1 spent on hiring a black worker, which is normally equally uh, productive as white worker, is greater than dollar spent hiring a white worker, then I'm still going to hire all black workers, even if, even if the employer is discriminatory. So again, th this is how we got the condition, right? It's just manipulation of these equations, WW, WB plus, uh, times 1 plus D greater than 1. As a result, wage rate paid to the white workers is still greater than even with the discriminatory uh, perception. So if you have small d, right, there are some discriminatory firms and large gap between the wages of black and white workers you will still, even though discriminatory firm will hire all black workers. So some firms can go out there and say, oh, look, we all hire black workers. We can't be discriminatory or racist. Yes, you can be actually. Moving on. If this is the case, though, look, if WW, so remember this was the first case. White-black wage ratio, even with the discrimination greater than one, White black wage ratio with the discrimination coefficient, if it's less than one, right? So you can plug in MPW over MPB whenever you see one. Let me just write it down here for you folks. WW divided by WB times one plus D. This is less than one which one is equal to marginal product of white to black worker ratio. Mm -hmm. And let's exchange the places of these two terms. So then you get MPB moves to the numerator left hand side divided by black wages with the discrimination coefficient less than V moved, right? MPY divided by, you have, we moved WW down here to the denominator of the right hand side. So what's going on here? What's going on here is that 
One dollar spent hiring a white individual brings in more money after discrimination. One dollar spent hiring a black individual. So I'm going to hire all white workers. Okay. So this is again segregation. I'm going to hire all white workers. If this is, and this is the case because black wage rate plus the discrimination coefficient is greater than the white wage rate. Okay. So this happens when we have large discrimination coefficient, small gap between, and also, and or small gap between wages of black and white workers. Okay. Just keep in mind. So let's take a look at the labor demand curve for black workers graphically. Okay. So this is an individual firm. And this is black to white wage ratio without discrimination coefficient here for uh, now it's measured, but we're going to have that proportion here. P is the fraction of workers that is black. Okay. So first of all, in the US, black population, black uh, individual population is 13, 10, 14 percent on an average. Therefore, we should have workplace representation in this percentage at least. Okay. So P is fraction of worker, workers that are black. It's going to be number of emplo employed black divided by total people employed. Okay. So here's the thing. If the WB black to white wage ratio is greater than 1 over 1 plus D, then you're going to hire all white workers. If this is less than 1 over 1 plus D, then I'm going to hire all black workers, okay? So where does this come from? It comes from this condition. It comes from manipulating this condition, okay? So we left W B over W white, right? Greater than I'm just dividing everything by W W. And I'm going to also divide this with one plus D both sides because I want to send one plus D one over one plus D to one side. Okay, if you do this, cancel, cancel, these cancel out, you have WB over WW. So if, check this out, this is super cool. If black white wage ratio is less than one over one plus D, I'm going to hire all black workers. So that's what we did. If WB over WW less than one plus 1 over 1 plus D, in this case, I'm going to hire all black workers. And this was the second case. If WB over WW is greater than 1 plus D, so that wage difference is greater than 1 over 1 plus D, then I'm going to hire all white workers, so this is the first case, all white workers, so the percentage of black people hired is 0%, right? This is 0%, okay? Market demand for black workers. So D is the discrimination coefficient. We're going to assume that minimum discrimination coefficient is greater than zero. That means all companies have some sort of discriminatory behavior. However, it could be such that some countries have actually the opposite. Some countries prefer to hire more workers from disadvantaged backgrounds or minorities. Could be. One example of this is Chobani Yogurts. Uh, the owner is a Turkish-American businessman worth billions of dollars. He says hire refugees. He was a refugee, I believe. He said, hire refugees. Refugees are a, a minority group. 
discriminated against sometimes group. He says hire refugees because when you hire refugees, they are no longer refugees. They have a job. They have family. Anyways, going back. So it could be such that some companies actually give preference. Okay. So, but for our model, this is the discrimination coefficients distribution in the population of employers. This is the frequency. D minimum. These are less discriminatory companies. And D max. This is more discriminatory companies. You're going to uh, be surprised, but there's a restaurant. I'm not going to, here's an example. I'm not going to name it, but it's known for hiring only women servers and also putting women servers in certain more revealing clothing. Okay. It's their theme, right? So one time a male worker sued this restaurant chain for not hiring him, said that I'm being discriminated against for not uh, having the certain look and for not being a woman. But restaurant had a team hiring certain looking women, females, and then uh, dressing them a little bit more revealing, more revealing clothing, okay? So going back to black and white context, D min is less, this is less discriminatory, smaller D, discrimination coefficient d max is more discriminatory okay so this is exactly like compensating differentials black white wage rate ratio right so this is the one plus one over d min why because you divide something with a smaller number it's going to be a larger level and in our in our you know, going back here, we are hiring all white white workers. If it is the wage ratio is below that threshold, I'm going to start hiring black workers. This was individual firm. So if wage ratio black to white workers is greater than any level greater than one over one plus D min, we're going to see companies only hiring white workers. Okay. So if the wage ratio is such that black workers are getting paying such low, you know, rates such that it's actually now below one over one plus D max, then you're going to all the companies will be hiring white, uh, sorry, black workers. So if you see an economy, everybody's hiring black workers, that doesn't mean they're necessarily non-discriminatory. That means there's a wage gap between these groups such that it uh, it is actually less than 1 over 1 plus maximum rate of discrimination coefficient. And here is the medium part. This is basically this uh, frequency distribution, right? This is exactly what we did in the uh, compensating differentials chapter, this frequency distribution. You are seeing a PDF. You are seeing this PDF probability distribution function. You're adding up all those companies, a little bit more and more discriminatory compared to this one, right? Joining. So starting from less discriminatory, the most discriminatory, and here's the most, even the most discriminatory hiring all black workers. So this is the labor demand for black workers in the market. Okay, so this is the SP is the supply, labor supply curve for black uh, workers. Black labor supply is perfect inelastic, determined by the number of black individuals in the population. So percentage of workers who are black. Okay, so supply and demand intersect. All right, so you see WB, W white, Black white wage ratio is less than one. So labor market equilibrium unfortunately creates this wage gaps. And black white wage ratio is less than one. Okay. Black workers get paid less than white workers. And even though at some point you can see, right, even if if your uh, labor force had a lot more black workers closer to that, 
uh, this is caused by discriminatory companies. How to make black population get paid close to the white population? This applies to also men, women, Hispanic, white. Distributions of the distaste uh, factor shifts towards zero. Again, look folks. In this model, we assume black and white workers have the same education. They have the same productivity. However, it's not the case, unfortunately. Education uh, attainments are different. We're assuming if black and white workers are identical. So in a discriminatory environment, distributions of the distaste factor uh, shifts towards zero. So companies becoming less discriminatory. Demand curve will shift up. They're going to become less discriminatory. Standard deviation of the distaste from D goes down. This is not very effective, but the frequency distribution of distaste factor for the minority group shrinks. Okay, that distribution becomes skinny and taller. Supply of black workers shifts to the left. So fewer black people, individuals in an area. So at places where fewer black population, these individuals get paid higher. Could be. Fewer black individuals, less picky, less discriminatory firms will hire black workers. So you're going to see firms with less racist discriminatory, these will hire black workers. Black workers will not necessarily pay much less because they are employed already, okay? So examples, Texas versus Mississippi. This is, let's say, the discrimination uh, coefficient distribution looking like this. In Texas, we have lower black population. For instance, Corpus Christi has very small black population. Okay. Um, here is the black white wage ratio. If you look at Mississippi, black population is much higher. So supply goes up with the disc presence of unfortunately discriminatory firms. Even if they had the same discrimination coefficient distribution, okay, you're going to see lower black-white wage ratio, wage ratio in Mississippi. Relative wages of uh, black and white workers, labor demand, they don't tell the whole story of discrimination, folks. We need labor supply to also figure out equilibrium wage differentials. Firms will hire black workers. Because black workers have lower wages, generate more profit, which is, you know, uh, sad. And this is a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're going to, you can be a discriminatory firm and hire all black workers. But at the end, you are doing so because you're paying them less. Okay, it is costly to discriminate in the long run. Discrimination should go away. So that D is costly in the long run. It should go away. In the long run, non-discriminatory firms should take over. Okay? Uh, we're hoping for that. In next part, we'll talk about the employee discrimination. In this part, we talked about employer discrimination. We studied Becker model. Please know the assumptions of this model. In this model, uh, we're assuming, oh... People have equal opportunities. Black and white workers have the equal opportunities. Or men and women have the equal opportunities. They don't. In my country, women and men, huge discrepancy in their education levels. Men are more likely to be sent to school. Women are pulled out of school before they have a chance to complete high school education. So how can you assume they have the same marginal productivity? It's a big, big issue. We just studied one model of discrimination. And next, we are focusing on uh, another topic of employee workers discriminating against each other. And I'll see you then.